Kick us off. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, welcome to our Live with Astronomer. These are our uh, shorter form sessions that we do every other week, you know, focused on developers. Uh, before we get started, just a couple of notes uh, kind of from the community. Wanted to highlight a couple of uh, upcoming airflow uh, or related meetups that are going on in case you happen to be in uh, one of these locations. Uh, this week, there's a um, astronomer will be speaking at the Modern Data Stack Meetup in Toronto. Uh, so great talk there uh, about using Airflow and DBT. Uh, so if you're interested in that, let me go ahead and join. Um, we've got an Airflow Meetup coming up in Tel Aviv, as well as a happy hour that we'll we'll be at in Austin, Texas. Uh, so if you're in any of these locations, would love to see you there. I'll throw links to these events in the chat. Um, also, in terms of our content spotlight, we just published a five turn integration tutorial. So we had some content about that last week as well. So if that's part of your stack, uh, you might be interested in giving that a look. Uh, we will also be giving a data lineage talk at the Data Council in Austin. That's on March 28th. So I'll throw a link to that as well if you're interested in that event. And um, the other thing I want to highlight here is Airflow Summit. Uh, this is happening in September this year in Toronto. Uh, we would, of course, love to see you all there. Uh, the call for presentations is still open. So if you're interested in giving a talk about how you use Airflow, um, maybe internally at your company or how you've used a certain feature uh, and you want some help with that, definitely reach out to us. I'll throw my email in the chat as well. Uh, we're happy to help. And uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing all of the community there. So with that, I will stop sharing. Uh, just a couple of quick housekeeping notes. Um, the chat is on. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, make sure you change that to everyone so that everybody can see your comments. As we're going, you can also use the Q&A feature in Zoom. We'll have lots of time for questions at the end of today's presentation. Uh, also, the session is being recorded, and you will receive an email afterwards uh, with a link to that recording, as well as a link to the repo that we're going to be going through with the example. So uh, you will be all set there. So with that, I'm super happy to hand it over to Daniel Imberman uh, today to talk about uh, running Databricks jobs from Airflow. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Daniel. Um, I'm a engineer and astronomer, and I've been working on the Airflow for quite a while now. So I'm really excited to show you guys some of the cool new stuff we're building to improve the Airflow Databricks experience. Uh, so I guess might as well just dive on in. Um, so for those, uh, so what we're going to be talking about today is actually Databricks workflows and Databricks jobs. Um, for those who don't know what Databricks workflows are, I'm just going to give a really quick overview. Essentially, in the last year, Databricks has kind of come out with their own workflow system that allows you to essentially define tasks. So these tasks can be notebooks, they can be SQL queries, they can be Python functions, and you can define dependencies and basically create and run DAGs within Databricks. Um, so, you know, the big biggest benefit, of course, of using Databricks workflows over just kind of running individual notebooks and individual uh, SQL queries is the fact that you get to take advantage of these things called Databricks job clusters. So Databricks has come out with a new form of cluster called job clusters that only work within Databricks jobs. And as you can see, it's a pretty massive uh, cost reduction to do things through Databricks jobs versus Databricks uh, all-purpose compute. So we wanted to kind of create a system that allowed for both the flexibility of Airflow, the Pythonic system, and the integrations with all the external systems. So having um, Databricks jobs are really great when you're purely within the Databricks ecosystem, but there's not that much there if you're trying to do like mixing Databricks and Snowflake or Databricks and S3 or mixing your Databricks workloads with other things outside of Databricks. So we wanted to kind of create the best of both worlds. And we've done that with what we're calling the Astronomer Databricks Provider. Um, so if you look here, I have an uh, I have a Airflow project set up uh, where the only things I had to do to get this provider to work is if you look at the requirements.txt, I pip install the Astro Provider Databricks. Uh, that's the name of the library. You'll get a link after this uh, call where you can look at the source code and see how to install. And in the Docker file, I add one environment variable, um, allow deserialization classes. So as of Airflow 2.5, we allow people to kind of add in their own custom serialization and deserialization classes, but we want you to be explicit about which ones you allow to prevent like unwanted classes from being serialized or deserialized in Airflow. 
So that's pretty much all the setup you have to do in terms of kind of admin. And so let's kind of dive in a little bit as to what it looks like in Airflow. So as you can see here, I have an example Databricks workflow and I've um, set up a Databricks con connection that just contains a host URL and a token as the password. So if I run this uh, triggered DAG, we can go in here and let's actually just take a quick look at the code before we do anything else. So the actual code itself, you'll see that what I'm able to do is with the Astro Databricks provider, I have this notebook operator and this Databricks workflow task group. Now, the way that the task group works is I can essentially create this job cluster spec, which is a list of job clusters. So the way that it works is you define your clusters as JSON, and then you give it a job cluster key. Um, if you look down here, you'll notice that each of the tasks take in a job cluster key. This allows you to have multiple clusters. So you could have like a GPU heavy one for ML or a um, memory heavy one if you're trying to do a lot of Spark or data frame based work. Um, but all we have to really know here is we create a DAG and then in the DAG, we create this Databricks workflow task group. And so the way that the workflow task group works is you give it the connection ID, you give it the job cluster spec, and then you can even give it um, kind of package level uh, arguments. So for example, here, we have notebook packages. So if you're in the Databricks workflow API, currently you can only actually define packages on a per task basis, but we actually have uh, added the ability where you can give a per job task uh, definition, like a per job package definition. So in this case, we want to import simple JSON from PyPy. You can give custom repos. You can point to jars. You can point to, um, there's a lot in the Databricks documentation of what you can do with this. And then at the actual task level, we define these Databricks notebooks. Uh, for the first version of this, we are only supporting notebooks, but there is plan to support SQL and Python in our product roadmap. Uh, but we figured this was the best way to unblock people uh, to, so as you can see here, we point at a couple of notebooks. You can even add your own PyPy packages on top of the job level PyPy packages. And then at the bottom, you define the dependencies. And so if we go back to the actual running task, you'll see here that we've actually created this launch uh, task. And this launch task was created by the Databricks workflow task group. And it takes in the metadata of all these subsequent notebooks and converts it into a uh, job spec JSON, which it then is able to submit to Databricks. So you'll actually able to be able to see here the exact job spec that's being submitted as your Databricks job. So here's your job clusters, here's your libraries, here's the dependencies. So we're able to like take those dependencies in Airflow and convert those into dependencies in Databricks. And so then what happens is we launch the job and all subsequent tasks become just kind of monitoring tasks. So these notebooks will work outside of a job context, but in a job context, they just become monitoring jobs. Now, if you're in here and you want to take a look at your Databricks job, you can click this see Databricks job run button, and that will take you into Databricks where you can actually see your job running. And so, you know, Airflow will monitor it. It will let you know when it passes or if it fails. So you can set up all any necessary alerting there. But let's take a moment to mimic some failures and see how would we handle uh, fixing those failures in Databricks. So I'm going to make these two tasks fail. So I'm going to cancel these two task runs. If we go back here, you'll see here that these are canceling or being canceled. And we go back to Airflow. Um, once it refreshes, you'll notice that, oh no, we have some failures. Uh, so now comes the question of, OK, we have these failed tasks. How do we rerun them? Well, when it comes to Databricks jobs, you can't necessarily use the same retry logic that you would in Airflow. Because every time you restart a Databricks job, you have to re-spin up those clusters. So instead, what Databricks has is what are called repair requests. And with repair requests, you actually have to know ahead of time what tasks you want to run so that Databricks can get, start up one cluster as a job and just rerun those tasks. So if I just want to rerun, let's say, Notebook 2, because Notebook 1, there's something horribly wrong with it, I can click here, and I can click Repair a Single Failed Task. And it will send a repair request to Databricks, give me the repair ID, 
And then I can even go back into Databricks and see that, uh, great, this one task is now running or pending because the job cluster hasn't been created. But let's cancel that job run because now I've gone back and I fixed both of my notebooks. So everything is ready to go. I want to try it again with rerunning the whole thing. So rerunning a failed single fail task can be really useful for, say, um, you want to iteratively try over and over again while you change up your notebook and figure out what was wrong. But now you want to actually finish your entire pipeline. If you go to the launch task, you'll see repair all failed tasks. You click that. It creates another repair job. And if you go back to Databricks, you'll be able to see that the uh, entire job is now in a running state again. Um, so this is actually pretty nice. I mean, like uh, currently Databricks in the UI only allows to rerun all failed tasks. And this allows for individual task reruns. So it's just kind of another example of where like uh, Airflow can kind of offer a little bit more granularity and a little bit more flexibility while still offering the incredible power of Databricks jobs and the incredible power of being able to like take as much advantage of your Databricks clusters as possible. Um, so as far as the actual features, that's really the main things to talk about here is just, you know, you can create an Airflow, you can create what feels like a very native Airflow DAG. You know, you're taking advantage of task groups, you're taking advantage of tasks, and all of your code is written in Python, so you don't have to use a drag and drop UI, you don't have to use JSON. And behind the scenes, Airflow really does as much as possible to create a native feel on top of that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the, the actual demo itself, but I'd love to open up to any questions people might have. Awesome. Thanks for that, Daniel. I uh, love seeing this in action. This is definitely an improved experience over the, keep calling it the original, I don't know, the older Databricks Airflow provider that um, I have certainly used and it does not have nearly as much functionality. So this is great. Uh, we do have one question so far in the Q&A. Um, I'm just reading real quick. Um, Oh, just a general question, maybe taking a step back a little bit, but can you talk to kind of the benefits of using Airflow to orchestrate some of your Databricks jobs as opposed to working solely within kind of Databricks's workflow? Yes, ab absolutely. So there's a few things. One big one is, of course, the Airflow API is very flexible. So for example, if you're in the Databricks jobs UI and you want to create 20 tasks, you have to manually create 20 tasks. In Airflow, you can put a task in a for loop and generate 20 tasks. So you have the flexibility of Python in generating your DAG. And the other thing is the interoperability with other systems. So if you are running, let's say you want to do part of your pipeline in Snowflake and part of your pipeline in Databricks, in Airflow, you can run Snowflake's op Snowflake operators or use the Astra SDK to run Snowflake transformations, put things into a table or into an expected S3 bucket, and then set the entire Databricks job to be downstream of that of those Snowflake operations. So you can kind of use Databricks with other things, as opposed to if you're in the Databricks uh, ecosystem, if you're using Databricks jobs, you really have to have everything as a Databricks task. It can really only be a Databricks notebook, a Databricks SQL, or a Databricks Python function. Um, so you're a lot more kind of limited to what's specifically in Databricks. Great. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, I don't see any other questions yet. We'll give folks uh, just kind of one or two minutes in case you have anything. Oh, another question in the chat. Um, uh, can you answer how this ties into Cosmos? I think we use the word co Cosmos in the uh, description. So maybe we can clarify that for folks. Yeah, absolutely. So we, as astronomer, like we're kind of trying to create the we created the Astro SDK as a way of like, this is how we would do ETL. And then the Cosmos is more, the Cosmos project has kind of come up as more of a, this is how we integrate with external systems. So Cosmos DBT was like, what does a native feeling DBT experience feel like in Airflow? And Cosmos Databricks is more of like a, what is a native Databricks feeling experience feel like in Airflow? Uh, one thing to note is that uh, pretty soon the name Cosmos is actually going to um, be retired. We're going to be calling what originally was Cosmos the Astro DBT provider, and this is now the Astro Databricks provider. So that that's where the tie-in of Cosmos is. Is that we want to kind of create 
as much as possible a native experience of working with these external systems so you don't have to think about airflow as something completely separate. Great answer. So everything Daniel covered today covers everything that was under that small state of works provider. Um, great. Well, I don't see any other questions. So um, again, Daniel, thanks so much for taking the time to go through that. Uh, you all will receive a recording as well as the link to the repo. I threw that in the chat a few minutes ago, but we'll send that out as part of the recap as well. So if you want to check out any of the source code and see other examples, uh, you're free to poke around there. But we hope this was helpful for everybody and hope to see you next time. Thank you all for joining. That's all. Bye.